Yamaha has made three V foot power amplifiers over its lifetime. B1, B2, and B3. B3 is one of the best amps I've heard so far. Two B3s to be exact. She's a stereo amplifier that can be switched to a B2L mode. That means you can use one amp for one channel, it's so called mono block. B2 is also kinda built as two mono blocks, but smashed together into one chassis. In theory, since the B3 is newer, it should also be better, but we'll see. Oh yeah. It may seem like I'm obsessed with the VFET amplifiers, um, yeah, maybe I am. But they sound so bloody awesome, I can't resist. VFET or SIT transistors were developed by this bloke, Nishizawa Junichi, known as Mr. Semiconductor. And rightly so, not only he was pretty good at his job, he was so obsessed with it, he was actually thinking about naming his son after a transistor. On as in being Japanese, there were only Japanese companies utilizing VFET in their product. Yamaha, Victor, known as JVC outside of Japan, Sansui, Sony and Hitachi. Unlike Yamaha, JVC and Sansui, Hitachi and Sony also produced integrated amplifiers with the VFET transistors. The production ran only for a couple of years, before everybody turned their backs on VFET and started using much cheaper and easier to work with MOSFET and BJTs. They say the VFET is as close to tryouts as transistors will get. And it's true. These transistors produce very warm and sweet sound, but unlike the valve amps, they're also very detailed. I need to repeat myself, but these are one of the best amps, period. Either new or old, you can hardly find anything better than this. B2's got four pairs of Yamaha's own transistors, attached to these big heatings. These are a bit dirty, but they are working perfectly fine. I'd explained it 5 billion times before, but it doesn't mean I can't do it one more time. Power amp is a special kind of beast. Everybody is usually used to integrate its amplifiers, which is essentially a power amp and a preamp in one chassis. Power amp takes care of the amplification of the signal, while preamp is there for volume control and additional inputs and outputs. Integrates are more convenient, since they take up less space and are considerably cheaper, but it also means they are not as good as their bigger sisters. Since I want to know how the B2 sounds on its own, I've connected the amp directly to the source, deck in this case, and left out any preamp that could interfere with the sound. As everybody would expect, the B2 came before the B3 and after the B1. The B1 was Yamaha's masterpiece and one of the first, maybe even the first, VFA amplifier. I'm not sure who made the first one, but it was either Yamaha or Sony. Sony's first VFET was TA8650, which was an integrated amp. These amps were such a massive success, other Japanese companies also wanted a piece of the pie. JVC came out with JMS7 power amp, Sansu with BA1000 power amp, and Hitachi with the low D HA500F. I've heard only JVC, and it's a cracking piece of hardware, not as great as the Yamaha amps, but certainly better than almost anything you can think of. B2 was released in 1976, she was the best amp I had to offer at that time, and the very steep price of 200,000 yen reflected this fact. Today it's easy to get one of these for a price between 500 and 1000 quid, depending on the condition. Yamaha produced about 10,000 of the B2s, which is quite a lot for an amp in this price range. There were two colors, the boring black that I have, and this much better looking silver model, which wasn't released in Japan for some reason. Alongside the B1, Yamaha released preamplifier C1, and they did the same thing for the B2 with C2. Unlike the C1, which was also WFET powered, Yamaha abandoned this concept and left out the expensive transistors of the equation for the C2. I've read many times that the C1 is superior to the C2, and in the B2 manual, Yamaha's bragging about both the C1 as well as the C2. It kinda seems like Yamaha was aware that the C1 is still a tad better. What is quite interesting that in 1985, which is 9 years after the B2, on 8 years after the B3, Yamaha released B2X. It's got nothing to do with the B2. It doesn't even look similar, and it doesn't have VFET transistors. However, I have yet to find out how the B2X sounds. She's not the pinnacle of her design, but she's solidly built and looks quite interesting, at least the front panel, unlike the B3 which looks like a UPS. What I always loved about old amplifiers are viewmeters, even though they are pretty much useless, but they look cool. 
Next to the view meters are some buttons and knobs. Nothing too special about them. This button turns off and on speaker output and with this you can switch between two pairs of speakers. These knobs are usually quite useless since most people use preamps to control volume. However, if you don't have a preamp or your source can't change the volume, these can come in handy. These level controls usually make the amps sound a bit worse, but in case of the B2, I haven't noticed any sound degradation. Back of the amp is fairly simple, as it should be. As you can see, it's a 100V Japanese version. On as usual, I needed a step down transformer. Unlike the B3, which was limited for the Japanese market, the B2 was made for the entire world. These old amplifiers always featured at least one AC outlet, and the B2 wasn't an exception. And then we've got the speaker section. You can connect up to two pairs of speakers and switch between them A on the front panel. Meter section is there for one reason, either measuring what's coming through the B2 which needs to be set to internal or measuring another external device which goes to these terminals and the switch needs to be set to external. What's really not that great however are these terminals. Honestly I've never seen worse piece of crap than this. Not only you can't fit a thicker wire but even if you somehow manage to fit the wire and lock it down with this crappy mechanism, there's quite a big chance it will slide out no matter how tight you fasten the bloody screw. It's a good thing you usually need to do it only once when you're setting up the system, because every time I was trying to fasten the screw, I wanted to kill myself. With this switch, you can choose between normal and DC mode. What does it mean, you ask? Normal is essentially a pass filter. It filters very low frequencies and lets anything above 10 Hz pass. It also sort of protects your audio equipment against unwanted parasitic power spikes. On the other hand, no filters are perfect and DC mode should sound slightly better. Getting inside is as easy as getting into a woman's knickers. You can see it's practically split in two parts, except for this PCB which covers four 18,000 microfarad caps. Each half has its own transformer, eating on this PCB, one half, one channel. Power output is 100 watts into 8 ohms. She ran the most ohm loudspeakers with ease. Distortion is pretty low, 0.08%, signal to noise ratio is 115 decibels and she weighs 26 kilos, which is about 57 pounds. Even though it may seem like it, it's not that heavy compared to the B1, which weighs 42 kilos, which is about 93 pounds. Unlike the newer B3, which is class AB, the B2 as well as the B1 are class A. Class A is considered being the best for audio reproduction, however it's got one nasty weakness, it uses maximum power all the time, even when the amp is producing zero output, which is better for distortion but highly inefficient. The wasted energy is then converted to heat. Class AB on the other hand is far more efficient, with little to no sacrifice to distortion and thus sound quality, presumably. The most important part of every amplifier is of course what's coming out of it. In case of the B2, it's a musical perfection. She can handle any kind of music, or sound for the matter. I had to compare her to the B3s of course. First, I did an AB listening test with one B3 and then with two B3s connected in BTL mode and I found out an interesting outcome. To my ears, the B2 was a tad better than one B3, but a tad worse than two B3s in terms of details on soundstage. The sound is very sweet and warm, as you'd expect from a triode, not a transistor. And that's the great advantage of an Evifa amplifier. Triode-like characteristics on astonishing details. If I don't know the B3s, I'd say that the details are perfect. You can hear every touch of the guitar string, every piano keystroke, every detail that's outside of range of most of other amplifiers. Soundstage is overwhelming, but in a good way. You feel like all the musicians and instruments are in the room with you. It feels kinda like a live concert. But unlike the live concert, the reproduction quality is spectacular, and without the annoying people around you. Whatever track I played, she was able to reproduce any kind of frequency. Bass response is superior to anything I've heard so far, except for the B3 of course. It's deep and incredibly clean. Mids are perfectly detailed, you can hear everything that's actually in the recording, and the same thing goes for right. Some amps tend to exaggerate the height, and it sometimes becomes too sharp and very unpleasant to listen to. 
And there was the Yamaha B2. It's a brilliant amp, and her being a VFA amp, she sounds very similar to the B3, but I just prefer two B3s over the B2. The B3 looks terrible, and you don't want to show it off to anybody, but sonically, it's just superior. I haven't heard the B1 yet, but what I've read on various chats and discussion websites, the B1 should sound even better. Well, some people say that the B1's better, some of them praise the B2's, and some of them the B3's, so it's a bit confusing, but I'll find out who was right when I'll try all of them. Anyway, you can only find a better amplifier than the B2, and what's so great about it? It's bloody cheap! I've had a chance to compare it to my mate's Akuface P7100, and the Yamaha sounded better to my ears. Which is a bit embarrassing, considering the Akuface costs 10 times more, and is 30 years younger. There are still a couple of VFA temps I haven't heard yet, like this Sony Power Amp, which is supposed to be the best of the VFA temps. For now, the Yamaha B3 is unbeaten, and even though it looks terrible, it sounds absolutely astonishing, and the B2 is very close behind. And there was the story of one of the best amplifiers in history. If you're considering buying a new amplifier, forget it and get one of the Yamaha's masterpieces. You won't regret it.